A boy who just wanted to straighten out his life. That's one way Charles Eli Phillips' family describes him in an exclusive News 5 interview. Tonight, Chris Eggert has their story. He seemed to be getting his life together finally as getting moving from a, a kid to a, an adult. He wanted to get out on his own. And uh, sometimes I guess that's not real good. Life seemed to be on the upswing for 16-year-old Charlie Phillips. He was working at a job he enjoyed that allowed him to drive a car that he loved. And although he wasn't living with his mother, Julie, she had no hard feelings. Charlie, he's ordinary. He was ordinary, but he was so good. It was difficult for Charlie's mother to break the news of his death to his little sister, Desiree whom he loved very much. And she misses him. And she's handling it very, really well. I says, we got to talk about Charlie. He goes, she goes, right away, she goes, is he dead? I go, yes. Was he killed? I go, yes. Instead of feelings of guilt, the mother of Tan is consumed with feelings of anger. I'm angry. I want justice. I mean, I don't even have time to mourn. I have no time to mourn right now. I don't have time for sorrow because I'm so angry because this was so unneeded. To be murdered, my son murdered, senselessly. And now Charlie Phillips will be laid to rest, although his family has vowed not to let this tragedy rest. No, I mean, I wish things were different. I want my son back, but that is not going to happen. That's not real. He's dead. I want justice, and I don't want him dying for no reason at all. I guess if a guy knows it's going to happen, just say goodbye. The family of Charlie Phillips is planning a small funeral for the 16-year-old. He'll be buried in Ohio next to his older brother, who died in a drowning accident. Welcome back. It's hard to turn on the TV, flip the page of a newspaper, or tune into the radio without hearing some type of negative political campaign ad. And tonight, Chris Egger takes a closer look. Fessler has taken more than $400,000 from corporate special interests that lobbied against the Clean Water Act. Everywhere you look, listen, or watch, politics. The election is only a week away, and terms like liberal and conservative are more common than the Bee Gees at a disco convention. South Dakota's political commercials are getting negative. One race in particular is the John Thune, Rick Wyland race for the House. He's got this polished, nice guy, you know, a uh, gentleman's quarterly uh, image on one hand, and then he's got this mawkish, uh, you know, Jack the Ripper, uh, type of personality in his negative ads. The way we look at it is a lot of times our opponents' rec records are negative and so an ad about that record is going to be negative. The latest trend in South Dakota political ads is endorsements. Tom Daschle is supporting Rick Wyland and Governor Bill Janklow has recently come forward with his support for Larry Pressler. With Tom Daschle as the Senate Minority Leader and Larry Pressler as Chairman of the Commerce, Science and Transportation Committee, we've got America's most powerful United States Senators. You know what, there's more believability in Tom Daschle endorsing Rick Wyland a lot more to anybody that knows anything about the, the people that are involved here than, than Bill Janklow endorsing Larry Pressler. I would much rather get Bill Janklow's endorsement than Tom Daschle's, so I think that's going to help Larry a lot. Bill's well respected, and Larry's well respected, and they realize that, that they're both good leaders for South Dakota. While Rick Wyland attacks me and defends his liberal views, I'm proud to be a South Dakota conservative. If you're sick of political ads, just consider this. You know, what's the alternative? Totalitarianism or something with one point of view. In Sioux Falls, Chris Eggert, News 5. And I'm Andrea Barber. Thanks for joining us. The search for Piper Striley is continuing today. This time, the search is taking place in the Baltic area near the Big Sioux River. And although past searches have left law enforcement empty-handed, this time they're hoping to get some extra help from two dogs with an excellent track record. News 5's Chris Eggert explains. Meet Mary Ann and Coyote, two German Shepherd dogs that have been specifically trained to locate human remains. They've been taught by their trainers to smell the chemical byproducts of human decomposition. 
we're not looking for the visual effect of a body. Uh, the dog is looking for uh, scent from these chemical byproducts. Chemical byproducts that can lead the dogs right to the bodies, whether they're buried or above the ground, fresh or aged. Let's put it this way. We, uh, we can document recoveries of bodies in criminal cases uh, that have been buried uh, in excess of 20 years. The two female shepherds are trained by Marsha Koenig and Andy Redmond, a husband and wife team from Redmond, Washington. They've been doing searches like today's for 20 years with a 90% success rate. Every search is unique and they take extensive planning and analysis. And having two dogs instead of one is a great advantage. Because when you're working on something like this, coyote, leave <laughs> The uh, scents can be very, very subtle. And before you start digging something up, you might bring another dog in and see what that dog does. Authorities are hoping the two dogs can help shed some more light on a missing person case that's remained unsolved for nearly three months. South of Baltic, Chris Eggert, News 5 Weekend Report. As of news time, authorities haven't uncovered any new evidence. In recent months, the state of South Dakota has seen an unusually high number of violent crimes taking place, and that's got many people wondering, are we safe? And tonight, Chris Eggert has more. Kidnapping and murder, they seem to be the latest big city trends to hit the state of South Dakota. These things have a tendency to run in cycles. I mean, we'll have several major crimes and then it'll drop off and for years we won't have anything. Piper Striley, a rural Canastota woman missing since late July. Benny Lively charged with shooting his mother near Howard. And most recently, the murder of a rural Geddes teen, Charles Eli Phillips. They're all high profile cases that have kept law enforcement busy and citizens concerned. We have to start locking our doors. We have to start being aware of the fact that with this increased population comes a lot of undesirable people and consequently crime is gonna go up. Increases in population and drug use are two of the main reasons why crime is on the uprise here in the state of South Dakota. But for the most part, Sioux Falls residents feel safe. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I think you just need to um, be aware and not uh, take your safety for granted. Well, I think crime's going to increase with the population going up, but I think it's to be expected. Local law enforcement feels they've got a handle on those that are causing the violent crimes, but they urge that we all need to be more aware of what's going on around us. In Sioux Falls, Chris Eggert, News 5. Ghosts, goblins, witches, and warlocks, not an uncommon sight on Halloween night. But did you ever think that any of those things were real, that ghosts and haunted houses could really exist? Tonight, Chris Eggert has a story that might make us all think twice. Chris joins us now from the News 5 newsroom with the story. Chris? Thanks, Sherry. Many of us get a little scared by things that go bump in the night. And if you're like me, Halloween night brings out your greatest concerns and fears. Tonight on News 5, we'll introduce you to a Harrisburg family that believes their house is haunted. Videographer Brad Dumke and I had the rare opportunity to go inside the house and witness some very uh, strange occurrences. Lights mysteriously turning off and objects moving with no explanation. And yes, for you skeptics out there, we have some truly bone-chilling video that may change your mind. Chris, you have to admit, you and Brad going into this house last night had to be a little bit skeptical. Well, I'll tell you what, you're supposed to have an open mind when you go and you deal with things like this. And, and we did have an open mind, but I didn't really expect to uh, see what we saw. Okay, and you're teasing us with this bone-chilling video. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Well, uh, as all the people that are in the studio can attest to, I was running around here like a chicken with my head cut off as we brought the video back and uh, took a look at it. We saw some very creepy things, let's say uh, ghosts, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out at 10, right? Yes, thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Chris. You see them in the movies and read about them in the tabloids, but have you ever believed in ghosts? Well, on Halloween night, you expect to hear the lighthearted stories about ghosts and goblins, but tonight, reporter Chris Eggert and photojournalist Brad Dumke captured a story you'll have to see to believe. So turn down the lights, sit back, and watch if you dare. <laughs> This is the home of Chad and Lisa Howe, 
a Harrisburg family who believes their house is haunted. Over the past seven years, some pretty strange things have happened here. I don't know, like just the lights going off and like if the TV's off upstairs and you go on there and it's on. And if something's moved that was there before, it's all normal. <laughs> Normal? I don't think so. Well, because for one, it's not like the movies, you know, where the walls are bleeding and, you know, things hop out and they got axes and chainsaws. No axes and chainsaws, but frequent sightings of ghosts, objects mysteriously moving, strange voices, lights, and babies crying. You don't even realize it's happening around, but then you'll get somebody out and like, my God, did you just see that? And I'm like, what? Well, I swear to God, I seen somebody just walk around the corner over there. And it's like, oh, no, I think you're just seeing things. There's nothing not going on here anymore, you know? I'm just kind of playing with it. And, but some people come back and we get quite a few that won't even come over anymore. If you're having a hard time believing this story, maybe you should take a look at this. When we got back to the studio, we took a look at the video, and over Chad's left shoulder, you can see a mysterious shadow behind him. This is a sequence at regular speed. Um, there for a while, yeah, lately. Now let's slow it down. I can assure you, there was no one behind Chad. No one human, I should say. It's kind of like a puzzle. Everybody's trying to figure out what's causing that. You know, is it paranormal or is it actually just something that can be explained? You're always getting people that are trying to explain it. I can't explain why the family hasn't moved out yet. I'm scared. For one, you know, you, nobody wants a haunted house. Uh, for two, every time things are starting to work out, something guaranteed happens and we can't go. I think it's time for us to go. I'm convinced. In Harrisburg, Chris Eggert, believe it or not. And finally tonight, as residents of South Dakota, we have no choice but to adapt to the upcoming long and cold winter. But what about those who have been forced to reside here, coming from the deep of the jungle or from the warmth of the desert? Tonight, Chris Eggert finds out how animals at the Great Plains Zoo handle a South Dakota winter. <laughs> One might think that the frigid weather of South Dakota would keep these animals indoors. But in all actuality, winter is an exciting time of year at the zoo. It's because they don't have to fight the crowds and, mm -hmm. and stuff. They see the animals better when there's not a lot of people around. Many of the animals enjoy the cooler weather, and they're a lot more active than they are in the summer. Almost all of the animals can survive just fine outside, with the exception of several birds, reptiles, rhinoceros, and the primates. So where does the lion sleep? We don't have lions at the Great Plains Zoo, but the lions that used to be here sleep in Jacksonville, Florida. Florida? Who would blame them? In Sioux Falls, Chris Eggert, News 5. Oh, you that you should have seen it. <laughs> and we only come out to a shoot. They were That's like right. dancing out here. What are you talking about? We'll continue on. Yeah, you, you had your choreography you together for the, the uh, Wemo yeah. yeah, we'll go. <laughs> now you're they were together at one point. <laughs> well, I would Play suggest not to uh, not to quit your day jobs then if you're thinking about some choreography here. I think I agree, but <laughs> anyway. Oh, we'll let the viewers decide, excuse okay. me. The phones are ringing off the hook, I'm sure. Did I just a click? Thanks for watching News 5, the station that's working for you. Uh, stay tuned for Tom Brokaw and Nightly News, and then, of course, we'll see you again here at 10. Have a nice evening. Or dancing for you, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, we're not going to waste any time. We'll take you live now with Chris Eggert to the Republican headquarters, where he has some people here to talk to us about that exact projected poll. Chris? Okay, thanks a lot, Sherry. Once again, we're here at the GOP Victory Party, and uh, several John Thune supporters are already gathered behind us. We've heard speeches from Bill Peterson with the Minnehaha County Republican Chairman, also Scott Odenbach, who's involved with the Minnehaha uh, County Republican Party. Uh, they've also had some remarks trying to get the, everything going and moving here tonight. Again, things are definitely starting to fill up, and the mood is starting to uh, get a lot better around here now, uh, especially with the projection that John Thune uh, is the winner here in the state of South Dakota. 
Right now we are joined with Herb Jones, and Herb is the John Thune campaign director. And Herb, what's going on right now? Well, we're uh, cautiously optimistic. Uh, Extremely happy the way it sounds. That's right. Uh, we'd like to see some hard numbers coming in. Uh, the projections so far are based on exit polling, but uh, we feel good, we feel confident, and uh, we saw good numbers going into this. It's been a long campaign. I know a lot of negativity has come out. How does it make you feel right now to know that it it's could finally be over and you could have finally won? Well, I'll tell you, this kind of contagious uh, energy is what we've seen on the campaign trail. That's what makes this all worth it. And uh, we'll look forward to talking with John Thune a little bit later in the yeah. evening. Thanks, Thanks Chris. A lot, Herb. You bet. All right, once again, we are here live at the GOP headquarters where uh, the AP uh, press has also said now that uh, John Thune is a projected winner here of the House seat in the state of South Dakota. We'll be broadcasting live throughout the evening here. We'll have interviews with Senator Larry Pressler. We also have uh, interviews with John Thune throughout the evening. And right now, I'd like to send it back to the studio. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Okay, we're going to go live now back to Chris Eggert. He's got John Thune, the winner in the House of Representatives race. Chris. Once again, we are live here at the GOP party, I guess it is. John Thune, what are your feelings right now after an election like this? Well, you know, we're relieved, we're excited, obviously, and uh, it's been a long, hard road, and uh, we finally, I guess, reached across the finish line. So it's, uh, we're delighted with the outcome, obviously, uh, ready to relax a little bit, spend some time with the family, and go out and hunt some pheasants. I've been waiting to do that for a long time. Are you going to feel like a small fish in a big sea when you get to the house? Well, you know, one thing, I've had the benefit of working there, so we kind of know what we're getting into. And I think that you have to be able, when you are only one voice among 435, to be a very strong, loud, clear voice for South Dakota. And we're going to work for all the people of South Dakota to see that our interests and our, our, are well represented in Congress. What kind of influence has Jim Abner had on your campaign? I know uh, he was on stage with you, and, and you were, he was kind of your mentor, correct? Yeah, that's right. You know, I, I worked for Jim back in the 1980s and uh, developed a great respect and appreciation for him. He's a man of great character, and uh, he taught me a lot of the uh, a lot about the good things that you can accomplish in public life. And so it was great to have him here tonight. He's just come back from open heart surgery, but he was willing to make the trip up to help us uh, help us through this uh, election night. So it was great to have him here. Okay, thanks a lot, John. Chris, appreciate it. That's John Thune, and uh, John and I were just talking a little bit ago. We might be able to get a basketball squad together. It's nice we can look each other in the eye tonight. We'll send it back to the studio. All right, Chris, he's got to be a very happy man, and, of course, congratulations to John Thune for his victory. And tonight, Chris Eggert finds that the exit's opening is being greeted with mixed emotions. Traffic. It's a growing problem here in the city of Sioux Falls. In an attempt to alleviate our traffic problems, the 26th Street exit was built. The Department of Transportation feels the exit will decrease traffic on 41st Street, 12th Street, and Marion Road. But the already busy area of 41st and Louise will probably see more traffic now, not less. 41st and Louise, that will be another problem. We're currently, have a, the city is working with a consulting engineer to formula design to upgrade the intersection to handle increased traffic. Most businesses feel good about the 26th Street interchange, although some area residents might tend to disagree. I think it will increase business greatly because it allows for a new route as far as coming off of 41st Street and also coming off the interstate. We should be able to get a little more business from both the south and the east. Some people say it'll be better, but I think it's just going to be worse, especially with the right out here by Walmart and Sam's Club. Um, I mean, it's, it's bad now. I think it's going to be a lot worse. Hopefully, the new exit will help redirect traffic throughout the busy city of Sioux Falls. And as for residents near 41st and Louise, they can only hope the city will come up with a workable plan to help decrease traffic in their area. In Sioux Falls, Chris Eggert, News 5. The Christmas season is always a busy time for stores and shoppers, but it's also a busy time for shoplifters. And tonight, Chris Eggert has the story. November and December are hectic months for retailers. They're also hectic for law enforcement, as the Sioux Falls Police Department responds to a greater number of shoplifting calls this time of year due to the increased shopping. The police are trying their best to help combat the sticky-fingered shoppers. We do uh, a shoplifting loss prevention seminar with uh, uh, the merchants at their request and uh, uh, quite active in that. In fact, the, the requests are starting to, to mount up now for that particular time of the year. 
Security officials at this Sioux Falls department store are beefing up for the holidays, increasing employee training and adding staff in the security department. But that's not the only thing they're doing. With the installation of a public view system and electronic article surveillance, store loss has dramatically decreased. The shoplifting overall, uh, the amount of shoplifters that we apprehend, detect and apprehend has gone down and our overall store loss has gone down dramatically. And for those still searching for a five finger discount. They're arrested first off by the store security and after that they are referred to the police. In Sioux Falls, Chris Eggert, News 5. Skills Challenge. Look up there, see if there's any wiring harness that's disconnected. Are they backwards? We have 10 high school teams from the state of Arizona. Ford has furnished 10 cars. They all have nine bugs, nine or 10 bugs in them. Defaults in the car. Go the plug wire. Well, I'll get this Number three, please. The purpose is for the students to find a bad part replace it with a good part in a short period of time. Oh, my God. Did you write it down? Did you write it down? No, I don't know. I didn't. They have an hour and a half from the time the uh, contest starts until it ends to find all the defective parts. No, we got something else major wrong elsewhere. Not only are they judged on uh, quickness, how quick they do it, how accurately they do it, they also have to take a written test for this contest, too. Go! Yeah! They have to be very intelligent and very dedicated to what they're doing. They're not only knowing the mechanical part, but the electronics, too. Hard work, got it. When they think that they have all the bugs fixed, they reach this point right up here, point of no return. That's the killer. They decide right there. Congratulations. Thank you. Are we team car? Perfect car. Perfect car. Yeah! Yeah! Oh! Keith, you tell us, Romney, congratulations. The winner, I'm told, goes to Washington, D.C. I sure wish my mechanic worked that fast. AAI awards the winning team members a full scholarship to attend AAI. On behalf of AI and National Education Centers, we'd also like to make an offer to both of you of a full-ride scholarship to Arizona Automotive Institute, a value $16,500 for each of you. Not only is AAI a sponsor of the Ford AAA Car Care Challenge, but it's a sponsor of the Friday Night Drags at Firebird Raceway. Students get a chance to test their cars on the same track where top fuel funny cars and dragsters reach for the ultimate goal of more speed. The neat thing about students coming out here to race is they're racing on the very same track where Kenny Bernstein set a record during the NHRA Nationals last year. Uh, top fuelers, funny cars, John Force, the biggest drivers on the very same track where students can bring their, maybe it's a 77 Mustang, they want to bring it down the track for their very own. And they can do that here at Firebird with the help of AI at Friday Night Drag. As speed is the goal of race teams around the track, Arizona Automotive Institute can help with your goal to become an automotive diesel or autotronic technician. Like I say, in all the training they give you, um, they pretty much prepare you for the field and they're really helpful. I mean, all the staff, you know, instructors, everyone here helps, we try to help in any way. 
Uh, well, they're giving you the, the theory and the hands-on training uh, with the tools and equipment that we'll use. There, there's a, a real demand for diesel mechanics with, with the proper training. If you ever want to be part of the exciting world of automotive technology, you need the basic training to get your start. Arizona Automotive Institute can give you that start. Just stay tuned to find out how AAI can help you. To keep top fuel machines at peak performance, take skilled, trained technicians and team work. Paying attention to what you're doing and understanding what you're doing is, is extremely important. Arizona Automotive Institute offers highly sought after training in autotronics, automotive technology and diesel technology. If you want to be part of this fast growing industry and make good money, Call 1-800-395-9355 to get your career on the fast track to success. If you think this is the kind of specialized training for you, you need to give Arizona Automotive Institute a call at 1-800-395-9355. Programs in automotive, autotronics, and diesel technology are offered. Just call 1-800-395-9355 to get your career in the fast lane. If you would like more information about Arizona Automotive Institute, check it out on the web. You can gain access to AAI info by dialing into www.azauto.com. Pages include the programs available to you, automotive, diesel, and autotronics technology. Cruise the AAI website for career information. Dial up www.azauto.com. It used to be that no one thought about their mechanics much. Automobiles and trucks were pretty simple, and just about anyone could do at least the basics. But today? That's why it takes specialized training like you can get at Arizona Automotive Institute to be an automotive or diesel technician. AAI can even give you the training you need to specialize in autotronics. If working on today's cars and trucks is what you want to do, call 1-800-395-9355 today. Financial aid is available if you qualify, so do it now. Thanks for spending this last half hour with us. To join the automotive field as a skilled technician, Arizona Automotive Institute is where you can...